ago. Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are in the world. And we love hearing from you and seeing where you are. So give us a shout out there. I see Nancy. You tell us where you're from, Nancy, and just put it in the chat there. Okay, guys. So this is my kind of my one of my favorite um, shows, which is going over your work and critiquing you and... Uh, um, so hopefully you've submitted stuff to the AYP club. Um, Jared, tell them if they still want to get in, they can do, do that, right? Tell them what to do. You can go over, uh, just look over at the description of this video, and you can see that there's a link to the AYP club. Submit your photo there. I'll be keeping an eye on it, and we'd love to get your photos in. And let us know that you're joining us in the chat. Uh, I'm more likely to bring up your photo if I see that you're in the chat, because if you're here, we want to show your photo off and For sure. uh, hear from you in the chat as uh, Mark talks about it. Nancy's in northern Nevada. I've been through there. It's a beautiful state. We uh, took a road trip last year, went all the way up to Montana. I absolutely loved it and drove back through, uh, actually went through Nevada on the way and came back sort of another route on the way back, but um, I've had a lot of good times in Nevada. Okay, well, let's get this party started. So if you don't know who I am by now, I'm Mark Silber. I'm an author, educator, and photographer here in Carmel, California. And I want to let you know, first of all, if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. And our show today is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo Lab. These guys are awesome. They will help you make prints of any kind. And they've got specials going on right now. You can get an album. You could use your, you could create a book this way, which is something I've been talking about a lot. Um, and that is 25% off uh, for any of these albums. And you can just use this code here. You'll find it on Bay Photo Lab specials. And what else have they got? They've also got 20% off on calendars and planners. Calendars right now would be a good time to start making a calendar. It's a really great way to promote your photography because you know what? People will see one of your photographs every month. Pretty awesome. Send them out to your clients and your friends and they're gonna promote for you. And as always, you get 25% off on your first order. So look, you know what I talk about. My mantra is make prints, make prints, make prints. And Bay Photo Lab will definitely help you make those prints. Okay, so do yourself a favor after the show, go over and order something from them. You will be really happy when you open that package. And there's a bunch of calendars or a book or whatever it is you're creating pretty awesome and our friend Bob Holmes is getting a bunch of uh, exposures made this is an exposure right here it floats off the wall and it's a great way to show your photographs anyway he's gonna get a whole bunch made for an exhibit that he's doing really soon hopefully he'll be on the show to tell us about that okay Jared well without further ado we're gonna get into doing some critiquing and well, these are before yeah. that, we should make sure that people know to subscribe and like the video. Well, I actually did that, but oh, we'll do did it you? again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I was all so right. busy getting the stuff. <laughs> so subscribe again and put up your <laughs> likes. <laughs> we definitely like it when you guys like, and that helps other people see the show. So there you, you know, go. I was so distracted by everybody's fantastic photos. Oh, and nice. That, that was clearly the problem. So we should we should take a look at them. Let's start looking at them. And these are t technically, what I'm doing is called a blind critique because I haven't looked at these before. It's not that I'm blind, hopefully, while I look at them, but it is that, you know, I haven't studied your work. We're going to take a look at it. Everybody on this show is going to see it for the first time along with me. So without further ado, here's the first one. 
Tell All us right. about this. So this is from our good friend Lucian, who is a longtime member of the AYP club. And he took this in Scotland. Wow, nice. Okay, you have, Lucian, you've got a beautifully set stage here. You've got leading lines. Um, it actually, it, it's interesting. It reminds me of one of the uh, paintings I use in my book on composition. I, uh, example of, of a, a canal with buildings on the side of it. So the leading lines are, are leading beautifully. The, you've got a, you know, you've got the clouds, you've got the buildings. There's one thing that I feel is missing, and that's a subject. Um, I don't have a subject to where should my eye go to. Now you can cheat. You're not doing documentary photography. Put somebody in that frame. Have somebody walking on the road, or somebody riding a bicycle. But put ideally a person in there that that you have set the stage for and then you're going to have a, a fantastic photograph go back there if you can and hey guys this kind of goes along with something i wrote about don't be afraid to be an active photographer to be a director you know if you're move if you're directing a movie you tell your actors where to go and where to stand and if you've got somebody with you loosen you could tell them to go stand in the frame if you don't have somebody you can do what Mads Iverson does and put it on a tripod and put your self timer on and you walk into the frame. You be the subject. And that'll just infinitely elevate this because why? Our eyes want a subject. You, you want to see what is this all about? What am I looking at here? So if you can go back there because you've got a beautiful stage set and, and put yourself in the frame if nobody else. Okay, who's next? All right, the next one is from our friend Mache. Uh, he did several autumn photos, and one of them was black and white, and I th thought that was an interesting choice, so I thought I picked that. I thought I would pick that one. It works. <clears throat> it works really well as a silhouette, and um, and absolutely, I can see why you chose black and white. It's backlit, and that's giving it the you know, kind of the shiny, sparkly around the edges of the leaves, which is pretty cool. Um, and it, you know, it works. It's a portrait of a tree. So there's the subject. We're, you know, you can take a portrait of anything, as our good friend Camille Seaman talked about. As a Native American, she believes everything is animated with life, and I happen to believe that as well. And especially a tree. There's, there's, you know, a majesty and dignity to this tree that you're capturing its portraiture. Now, does it bother me that the arms of the tree, it doesn't have the full spread of the branches? No, it actually doesn't because you're just like a person. You don't have to show their whole face. There's no rule or law that says you can't just have a portion of a person's face. And in this case, it's the portion of the tree. You've got some nice layering going on with the background and the trees behind it. And uh, overall, that works really well, definitely as a black and white. The only thing I would probably recommend, I don't know how you processed it. Uh, <clears throat> I always use Silver FX Pro. Uh, I'd like to see, you know, just a little more strength in the blacks. The great thing about Silver FX Pro is you actually can see where it lies on the zone system. And you can see if you've got a pure black and a pure white, and you can adjust things accordingly. So I just like to bring it out a little bit more, just a little more punch to get that dynamic range. It's a very minor suggestion because it, it's, it's working by itself. So good job. All right, who's next? All right. And if you guys, right, while I'm going through this, and if, especially if I'm critiquing yours and you have a question or a feedback or mark i don't think that's right or whatever you want to say please feel free to do so by the way the big difference here one of the biggest differences between what we're doing and what we do in the ayp plus show is that we can open up our microphones to ever whoever we're uh reviewing and we do that so that they can speak and other members of the audience can speak and it makes a huge difference okay so, right. so what, what do we got here 
this is from Nancy, our friend in northern Nevada, although yeah. this was taken at Convict Lake in California. Oh, Convict Lake over by uh, Bishop. Yeah, that's a beautiful spot. I just read a book about that, as a matter of fact. It's called Sierra Phantom. It's about a guy who lived in these mountains for 50 years. 50 years. Can you imagine that? And especially through harsh winters. And I'm very familiar with this. I've done a lot of backpacking all through this region here. So you've got, um, you've got a, a really well framed, you've got a leading line on the trail here. Um, the mountains are gorgeous. And you have a subject here. It's very tiny. And I almost missed it. Yeah, right there. Um, it would be nice to make that a little more prominent because it can easily get mistaken for maybe a rock or something. I was, you know, as I looked at it, I found the subject, which is basically the leading line. And by the way, that's kind of one of the key tools of using a leading line like this is to have a subject that your eye goes to because that's what a leading line does is it just draws your attention so if they're walking towards you I wait a little while and let them come closer into the frame so they're more dominant if they're walking away from you wait to find somebody else you've got us whenever you go to a scene like this you've got you've got yourself set so you just have to wait and like I said before you can walk into the frame and be your own subject but um, it's it's you know it's a beautiful photograph of Convict Lake. It's got you know a lot of layers in it. You've got the foreground with the with the rushes here and the background and the and the erosion of the mountains and then we've got the trail. So hey, photography is about a lot of it is about patience and waiting and you know if you don't see what you want, make it happen. Walk into the frame, put it on a tripod. Find a person and say, would you mind walking into the frame and just turning around when you get to that rock over there? You can direct them. Anyway, there you go. So. All right. How could Our... the contrast been improved? Can you offer me anything on the contrast? Um, well, I don't frankly see that as a huge issue. It looks balanced to me, but if you want to improve contrast, Chris Burkhardt said the last slider he wants to move is the contrast slider. And I have really grown to agree with him on that. And there's better ways of bumping your contrast up. For one thing, I always take the highlights as low as I can get. And I take the shadows up. And that builds contrast right there. You've got your mid-tone contrast sliders, which are, are clarity, texture, and dehaze. You might benefit by the dehaze slider on this one, there's there's a little bit of haze in the sky here. So that would probably be the slider that you'd want to, yeah, just a little bit up there. And that would punch up the clouds, or, or rather the blue sky would come out. But be very, very cautious. Do not make big adjustments with either of those sliders, with any of those three sliders. In fact, with most sliders, it's like, and I say this, I'll say it again, it's like seasoning. You do not want to take paprika or chili flakes and just go like this. On <laughs> You're going to be disappointed. You want to maybe fleck a little bit of paprika, unless it's garlic and go to town. Man, I'm, I'm a big garlic lover. We'll just <laughs> pound garlic. In. But not everybody can tolerate that, so you have to be mindful of what other people, you know, what their taste buds are like. But in this case, make tiny little adjustments with those mid-tone sliders. See what happens. That would be my suggestion there. Okay. Um, Mark Silver, not a vampire confirmed. <laughs> oh yeah, boy, I keep the vampire stuff at bay with all my, uh, <laughs> all my garlic eating. All right, so all right. we have uh, a comment here from Ande. I'll just go ahead and post it on there. One suggestion along with telling a picture can be better. Please also, if possible, tell how it's not good in the first place. This will help us improve our thinking. Well, I, I do that to some degree, but I'm, I don't usually like to say, well, why I think this is bad. I'd really rather, and you can surmise, if I say this is what you can do to improve it, 
I mean, we don't have to go down that negative road. You can just figure it out yourself. If 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 there's some area that could be punched up, then that's that's the way you do it. That's my style. If you like negative criticism, uh, this probably isn't the place to get it. All right. So who's next? I, I think uh, just speaking as somebody who watches Mark do a lot of critiques, I think he does say areas that you can improve it. He's just, uh, you know, he's not going to do the uh, Gordon Ramsay and American show yeah, style. Really? Like, he's more like the British style of Gordon yeah. Ramsay. If you've ever seen in the British shows, he's a lot less confrontational uh, and a lot more... Uh, gentle with his critiques, but they're still good critiques. It's just a stylistic change. Yeah. So you that's can what... you can figure out what it is. I, if I think something needs to be improved, then I could also yeah. flip it around and say, well, that was keeping it from being what it ought to be. All well, right. Speaking of uh, Anand, uh, I think that's how you say your name. Uh, here's his photo that he submitted. So. Oh, nice, Anand. Well, okay, so. This is an interesting photograph. Where are we looking? I'm, you know, we don't have to know that in the photograph. I'll, I'll give you a strong, okay, since you asked for it, I'll give you a couple of strong points that I think would, I, I feel like finishing the arc of the boat would really help. It leaves me, it leaves me feeling like I want to see it. So that's just pull back a little bit. I, why is that? I don't know. It's completing the geometric design. And the other element, which I've already mentioned, is I think it would be stronger with the subject in that frame. So it's a beautifully, you know, the boat is serving as its own kind of geometric frame. Why not put somebody in it, including yourself? We're kind of on a theme here, and that often happens on these critiques. Pull back a little bit. You've got that interesting red-orange color, which would highlight somebody standing or sitting in the boat. I kind of envision like, hey, again, nobody else is around. Take your tripod with you. Watch our show with Mad Iverson Peterson, and he makes beautiful photographs, but he's always in the frame. It's, it's just, it's that little touch that's going to make a huge difference. The other thing, I, just processing, I would bring those clouds out. And again, your Dehaze slider would, would help you with that. So there you go. I'm not going to say those are negative points. I'm just saying those are points that I believe you could work on that would elevate it. Go back and All see right. if you can. Okay. Here's one from Ed Barr. It may be too late to submit today's critique. It is not. Uh, no, apparently just bringing not. it up for that. Keep submitting. I've, a couple people have been submitting, and I and I'm watching it actively. So I'm I'm adding them into the show. So I'd be interested to see Mark's take on this one. It was critiqued at my photo club this week, and I'd be interested to see how your take compares and contrasts with feedback I've already received. Oh, I think I remember your comment on that. Yes. Well, yeah, I saw that on our Facebook page. So it's interesting. I'm first drawn to the framing, and it looks to me like you took a photograph of the photograph in the frame, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the actual frame, or is yeah, that a digital this is a frame? But you can correct if it isn't. Yeah. Anyway, that's a cool way to show us how you have it framed. Um, and I'll talk about the framing in a second. But I think the photograph is very compelling. I think it's a very, like, you know, you've got a lot of elements in there that are working for it. The, the uh, reflection. I'm a big fan of reflection. I'm also a big fan of silhouettes. And I think, you know, you've got both of them going on. So there's the orange, the bright, the uh, really warm tones and, and what's going on in terms of kind of the layers of going into the sky. We have a foreground layer. We have the reflection. The water is perfectly smooth. Um, you know, it's a great image. Yeah, you've done a good job. On your framing, my hey, here's my only comment. I'd like to see a little more of a, uh, on the matting, I'd probably go with a little wider mat. So that instead of that tiny little edge, this is just me, okay? I, I, I can't even tell you a, a really a technical point of why this is, but a lot of framing and matting is, I think, is... It's really just your own taste. But, but I work with a framer, 
and boy, he just, he's an artist. And just knowing how he looks at my work and how he ends up framing, he would have put a wider mat. And all that that would do is add more depth and it would just draw your eye in a little bit more. So that's, that's a really tiny point because normally we're not even seeing the framing. But, you know, what am I going to critique here? It's a great photograph. You've, you, you caught, you caught uh, the golden hour. You got the reflection. You got the smooth water. I don't know if you had to use an ND filter or not. And you've got the, you know, the layers of the clouds going up. It's a portrait, a tree portrait. And it's at a beautiful time of day, and it's well-framed. There you go. Um, sounds like the frame was added uh, digitally. Oh, okay. All right. So you can skip but all those still remarks. Looks but looks good. Well, you, it's, it's a good idea if he does want to print it, which I think... Yeah, if you do be. want to frame it, I would just, yeah, go with a wider mat, just because I really feel like uh, it'll help draw your... It just gives it a little more breathing room, and... Uh, you know, the frame shouldn't intrude into the photograph. So it's a little, to me, it's just constricting it a little bit too much. So there you go. Try it out. If you do want to get it framed, and I agree, I listen, I would recommend you do. Go to Bay Photo. You can, you can pick mats and frames along with ordering your photograph. And it'll arrive completely matted and framed and absolutely be gorgeous. Okay. All right. So good, good work. I don't know how this, different that is from what whatever you got critiqued on, and I'd be curious if you want to add anything. So, Ed, thanks for submitting. This one's a little bit different. This is going to be a story, but it's um, but I wanted to bring it up. So this ah. is story title: Fighting Against Invisible Monster, uh, aka COVID. Um, so this is the first photo, and I'll just go through. It's a five-photo okay. story. So first, double exposure. Go back there. For that oh. last one. Yep. Yeah, I think is that a double exposure or what am I looking? I at think here? so because I yeah. believe it's the same person. Interesting. Okay. And then, wow. Powerful. And then the final. Interesting. Wow, it has an arc. So, did they Let me recover? know if you want to... Uh, Go back over yeah. it again. I'm just curious. Did they recover or did they disappear? I'm, I'm not sure either. That's yeah. kind of what I was wondering. It's kind of a mystery. So, it it's a very powerful series of images. And it reminds me of... I mean, listen, this this is what we've been doing with um, our friend Dan Milner is, you know, we're telling stories. And um, this one, um, there's my only comment is there's a little gap here uh, between the first four and this last one. I'm kind of not sure how they all fit together. I would almost leave this one out just because or if there's an if there's one in between. So go back through it again. So we're seeing a very poignant series of uh, images of somebody who's obviously very ill, uh, you know, having to be on oxygen. You know, that's showing the severity. And then it looks like she's getting up and going to the window, although I think that's a different person from what I see. But it does look like. A double exposure and then the empty bed is wow that leaves you wondering did she die or what happened here um, which is good it leaves you wondering but then I don't really know is the you know it doesn't quite connect I'd almost end your story with the with the empty bed image I think it has more emotional impact Unless you can then maybe add some other elements that show how did we arrive at this happy moment here. So there's just a little bit more either end here or give me some more in between the empty bed. Maybe she's now standing without the oxygen or something and we can see her face without a mask. Because when we go to the next frame, it's hard to recognize who she is. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, that's just kind of the sequence in your storytelling. So yeah, I would go either one way or the other. Stop at the previous one or give me some frames in between. But look, having said that, you're, you're, it's so spot on what you're doing here in terms of your courage and getting in front of these people is not easy, right? Uh, Ed Koshy talks about it. You know, you, you get involved with these people's lives and she's, everybody's accepting you into their what is really a very tough situation so because they're going about their business without really looking at you or being concerned with you so you've done you've done a good job of entering yourself into the into their world here and what's going on yeah this is the kind of thing that i could think of you know people would look back on photos like this trying to understand what was it like during COVID times you know yeah exactly yeah, I, I, you know, I, I agree she probably did recover, but there's a little bit of a missing, just give us a, some frames in there that can help us understand what actually happened. Or, again, end it right there. Because that has a lot of emotional impact right there. Boom. Okay. But, yeah, so good, saw good, that. Good, good we don't, on we don't often series. get uh, stories like that. So it was That's really right. To... Good on seeing a series. I applaud yeah. you for that. Um, here's a photo from our good friend Bert. Bert, long, long time AYP club yeah. member. I think one of the very first, and he has finished his eleventh year of photography. And if you if you are part of AYP club, you know that Bert he he photographs two things, especially baseball yeah. and music. That's right. Uh, and so these are from he he had a shot of some baseballs and then a shot of this guitar. Uh, which were taken, this was taken from a show earlier this month. Uh, and so he was just kind of reflecting on his 11 years in photography and saying that he's already got his calendar filled up for the next couple of months. It oh, says, keep awesome. shooting and keeping your passion burning. Cool. Well, Bert, this is a, a cool portrait of a, a, a very interesting guitar. Uh, I immediately think of Jimi Hendrix and his famous Sp Star Spangled Banner <laughs> rendition because what are we looking at, right? And I, I'm going to guess, I'm going to take a wild guess that that is the inspiration behind that uh, because we have stars and stripes. Um, and, it, you know, this would fit in with a story. So maybe the, you know, this is an insert uh, photograph with the guys playing and you know, knowing where you're going, you probably have obviously have other images of the guitar player. And so, but it's a really, it's a cool insert and it's a cool portrait of this um, of this guitar. And it gives us, you know, an insight into maybe who this musician is. But I, you know, I, at some point I want to see it well along with the rest. You know, build it up into a, an actual story. But good, good job, and congrats on your 11 years. That's awesome. Well done. Okay. All right. This next one is from another new member of the AYP club. Welcome, uh, okay. Sandy. Uh, first attempt trying to catch birds in flight uh, yeah. with a Pentax K1-2, uh, uh, as in like Mark II, uh, and then a Pentax 150 to 450 millimeter lens. Um, said my tripod is broken, so two were handheld and the other with a wobbly monopod. Wow, <laughs> broken tripod yeah. is definitely an issue. Yeah, good job holding it uh, pretty steady. So uh, the, you know the arc of these birds is really interesting. That di those diagonal lines add a lot of feeling of motion. That's what a diagonal line does. I would uh, just in the processing do a couple of things. I would. Like I'd mentioned, try those mid-tone sliders, especially the dehaze, just to bring out a little more contrast, you know, a little more depth from the from the clouds. And uh, also, I play with uh, the highlight slider, move it as far as you can to the left, and then bring your shadows up. I think both of those would help expand the 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 um, dynamic range of the of that image. And just give it a little more punch. We want to separate the birds from the from the clouds and give it give it as much separation as you can, which will give it a more of a three dimensional kind of feel, and make the birds stand out even more. So that just some 
little processing tools that I would encourage you to try those out. Let us know how that goes, and you can repost it. You know, if you found those were workable, repost it in the AYP Club. But good on your your courage of shooting handheld, or I guess you monopod, and, uh, you know, good on your first attempt at, at capturing birds in flight. All right. This one is from Manas. Uh, who also just joined. So also welcome to the AYP Club. That is really interesting. And now here's a good example of a leading line that leads to a subject, right? And that orange line is really wild. I guess that's a, a roofing. Well, obviously, they're putting a roof on. And maybe that's, oh, I see. That might be the actual like uh, aggregate paper that's being nailed to the roof. Possibly. I don't know. Interesting. It doesn't matter what it is. But, um, you know, you've got the orange line leading right up there and the bat, you know, the blue background. And they're silhouetted. And you've got geometry. So you've got a lot of interesting compositional elements. Um, only slight improvement I could offer is this. So we've got three subjects which one do we look at is not as clear as it could be. What you could do to the center guy, I, I feel like I'm I'm looking at him doing something. So he's got to have a hammer in his hand, right? He's pounding. Wait for that hammer. Get some motion, you know, in his hand. You'd have to maybe move around so you get some separation from the background. That could add a punctuation point. A lot, I'll mention this again. A lot of photography, you got the stage set. Wait, keep keep shooting. Be patient. Get some more frames. You never know. Like as you shoot, something really interesting happens. There's a little more um, feeling in it. But it's the center guy. The other, you've got them well framed because they're not bumping into each other. But I want to see that center guy. Something could pop that out a little bit more. A punctuation point. But it's a very well-composed photograph. And this is the deal, you guys. You know, one of, the, one of the things about photography is just being patient. It really is. It's funny because it sounds like sometimes you have to be really fast. <laughs> you have to get in there and get that photograph just right then. And you don't have any time. That's true. But sometimes you have to wait. So it's all about timing one way or the other. You know, it's either going to happen really fast or you got to wait a while. And maybe it takes a half an hour until you get the gesture that you want. But go for it. Okay. All right. Uh, our next one. This is from one of our friends, Lou, in AYP Club. Ah, Lou. And uh, Lou, uh, she was uh, not, not the sunrise I was hoping for, but fun to be out with a camera and making the best of the conditions. It's a tree portraiture. And, um, you know, I, I, it works. You know, it's a very subtle, kind of dreamy sort of feel. Um, is that a little spot? I don't know. I'm just, I can't tell if that's on a screen or. This over here? Or up up oh, over here, yeah. Over here? Uh, move the frame around and let's just see if it moves with it then we'll know it's a spot yeah does it does it seem like it's i can't really tell i, th I think just, it is i think it is moving okay well, that's spot. just a technical thing you want to spot your sensor spots yeah you got a couple of sensor spots there i would also recommend i don't know why these things go in groups like this but your <laughs> dehaze slider would would um it does look like you've actually already moved it around. You might try those other sliders just to bring to just a little more um, out of, in terms of the cloud. Again, we would like to see a little separation, a little contrast there. This, this sliders would be pulling your highlights down, pulling the shadows up a little bit, and then trying, and a lot of it is trial and error, see what happens. You don't... I don't know you're going to gain much from the texture slider, but I believe that the dehaze, you know, it looks like you might have already been moving that around. So just 
so again, sometimes it's just tiny little motions. I would say, I got to say one other thing, Lou, is it would be really cool if there was a person in that frame. Because you've got, you know, these are beautiful trees, but take your tripod, walk into the frame if nobody's with you. Or if you have a friend with you, ask them. I always use people around me. Dogs, people, uh, don't be afraid to put them in the frame. They're there and they, they can help you with your photographs. So I would just add, I'd add a person into this frame. And probably where I would put them is right between the, the yeah, those trees either right there or over to the left between, yeah, somewhere in, somewhere in between these trees here. And could even be all the way to the far left. But the I, th I think a really cool framing spot is this rectangle in the middle of the two trees. Yeah, right there. O over to the right. To the right. Oh, right. oh over. Yeah, the oh, other right. Yeah, right there. I think that could look really cool. Just have somebody standing there or looking or whatever. Go for it. And you could be yourself. You could set it on a self-timer or have a, sh a remote shutter release. Just a thought. Okay, we have time for a couple of more. All right. This one's from our friend Amir. Uh, and this was taken in uh, Potoshan, China. Hopefully I said that right. Um, and so, yeah. Lovely photograph. It's, uh, you know, it's a framing device. There's many, many ways to frame a photograph. And this one has actually happens to be kind of a combination. It's a circular frame cut, you know, with a with a rectangle below it. But what it does is it le it's beautiful. It's like a keyhole. It leads your eye to the subject, which is the tree. And there's also some depth in the foreground because we're looking at it. And that's called tunnel composition. You've got a number in oftentimes these combine together, which this one does. And it's a beautiful sort of dreamy, foggy, you know, photograph of, of this background here. I'm going to say the same thing I just said. I think it would be really interesting to see a person in that frame. Could be you. Again, you've got the stage so well set. It's got all these perfect elements in it. Push, just try it. And, and, you know, sometimes, you guys, it's just getting over uh, the idea that we can find beauty in a photograph without doing anything. But maybe that one extra little element, and it, this is me. I believe that people become more interesting, and I, I believe a photograph becomes more interesting when you add people to it. Why? Or an animal, life, a life form. Not that a tree isn't a life form, but it's not an animated life form. And I think we identify as humans. We're immediately going to identify with another human or a dog or a donkey or something, you know, that goes, wow, that, that literally brings life to your photograph. Just think about it. Okay. Just try that out. All right. Oh, wait. I think there are people in it, actually. I think these are people in like raincoats or something. Really? Okay, I, think I can't. So I'm looking real hard. It is hard oh, to tell. Oh, I sort of see. Well, maybe in your processing, you could bring that out some more. Yeah, I bring kinda those get colors it. out. Or wait till they move. So they're kind of. If that is a person, wait till they move in more to the right there, and then they would be framed right in the center there, which would be very cool because you've got leading lines going up there. So in yeah. that case, it's just let them move around a little bit, or ask them to. Hey, would you mind moving over here? Don't be afraid to do that. All right. Okay. We got a couple more here. Uh, this one is from Paul Gray. Uh, and I believe there was a caption with it, if I can find that. Afternoon nap. Yeah, I get it. Um, you know, it's a beautiful, dreamy uh sepia it looks like you did a little bit of a sepia tone here which kind of gives it an old-fashioned look um and you know you've you've done a good job with your depth of field personally i just like to you know make it more interesting if the animal was looking at us 
I get it that it's taking a nap. Or maybe you move around a little bit to the left so we could see its face a little more clearly, its eyes. We connect with eyes. So anytime you show an animal or a person's eyes, you're going to have a more con stronger connection. So in this case, just move around a little bit. Just you, if the animals, if the dog, I think that's a dog, right, is sleeping. Uh, I think it's a cat. Oh, is it a cat? Okay. All right. Maybe. So I'm not sure actually. It's either a small dog or a cat. Anyway, move around. And I guess this is on my theme today. Be your own director. Like, what's going to make this pop? Is it maybe seeing that face? Maybe even going to the other side of the room so we can really see that dog's face or cat's face. Try it out. And you guys are setting your stage, but just take those, just take that next set of steps. And sometimes that's all it takes to get from really a good photograph to something that pops. And that's what I'm suggesting here. That's what it's all about. All right, let's take one or two more, and then i got to bail out of here. Yeah, all right. This one's from another long-time contributor, Ram. Ram, okay. Uh, no caption with this one, I believe. Pretty cool. Interesting how the arrows are going, and he's going the opposite direction of the arrows. Mm -hmm. You've done a good job with those clouds. You've moved those sliders around. Um you know, here's my own suggestion. I'd like to see the speed maybe accentuated. And I would do that by panning the camera as you go. So what that will do is that will blur the background and keep your subject uh, still. I'd like to see the contrast and get the feel of that motion. And that would that's the technique for doing that. The You know, we do that with cars. They're zooming by. You can pan your camera. And that'll give you a relatively still um, car, or in this case, whatever this is. It's kind of a pedal go-kart. And then let the, let the background blur. And that'll give you contrast and motion. And it'll, it'll, it'll punch up this uh, little kid riding this thing. That's, that would be my suggestion here. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, um, this last one is actually, uh, oh, and a vet suggested maybe some, maybe turning it black and white. Yeah, I, it could be. I don't see that as, yeah, there's a little bit of color there that's kind of interesting with the signs. I, I think just the panning it would, would make it pop. All right, um, so this, um, this one's actually two different photos. I'll show the first one first. Um, the story behind it is I was recently in Grindelwald region in Switzerland. Oh, I I've been there. Shots. I know exactly where that is. Perfect. <laughs> um, and so here's two shots I've edited a bit, but as is often the case, I'm a bit unsure about them. I guess they lack story and or main subject. What do you guys think? Are these okay in their own right? Or do they lack something? So there's the well, first one. Well, you, you figured it out. And I have and taken this photograph. One. Yeah. I know that spot... Uh, there's a chairlift that goes up to the mountains, and uh, Jan and I, in what 2019? No, 19, 18. Uh, it's a little blurry, but um, we went there and we hiked up. We took the chairlift up to the top, and then hiked another wow, I don't know, 14 miles or something, and then took a train, small train back. But you already figured it out. There is uh, go back to the the. The one that's much more interesting is the first one, the green. Yeah, where's the subject? So you already know that. So you did your own critique. It's 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 cool, but it needs a little punch, right? So could that be a person? Yeah, could be a cow, horse. Um, bring bring that subject into the frame, and and you've got an image that will really stand up there. Okay, so. As sometimes happens, we've kind of hit a bit of a theme in today's critiquing. Look for the subject. If there isn't one there, put yourself in it, okay? Use your sliders gently, but you want to punch up, you know, if you've got clouds, you want to punch that up. Make, make a stronger dynamic range. Those are kind of the underlying critiques, but be patient. 
be ready for a photograph at any moment, but be patient at the same time. Sounds like a kind of a Zen, a Zen story. Because <laughs> it is a little bit, you know what Zen actually translates to is looking. And you know, really you can think of it in terms of carefully looking, not just blurring things by, but really looking. And that's what photography to me, why it's such a magical skill, is because it causes you to really look and stop and not just be a tourist and let things zoom by, but really paying attention. So I'm thankful for you guys for submitting your work. If you want to take any of these suggestions and then repost them in the AYP club, that would be awesome. Um, we'll do, you know, every once in a while we'll do one of these critique shows. You could even bring them back. Okay, so that's all for today. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to go buy Bay Photo when we're done here and order something from them. And don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming shows. And, uh, you know, the main thing is I want to remind you guys to like, <laughs> share, <laughs> subscribe, leave your comments. I always try to answer every comment. Sometimes it's just a thumbs up or, you know, thank you, whatever. But try to get by and acknowledge what you guys have put up there. And the most important thing is this. Say it along with me. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. Stay safe. Stay creative. I love what you're doing. See you soon.